Hello, chess friends, and welcome to the Zadov Chess Channel, and welcome back to our Slav Defense series. So, in this series, we're covering this very nice opening from White and from Black's perspective, and today we're continuing with the Slav Defense with a different line, with a very, very aggressive approach of Black's with the so called Winnever Counter Gambit. The Winnever Counter Gambit is sort of a surprise moment, I think, that you can use in order to beat the White D4 play, and I think uh, many, many, uh, many players, even stronger players, will have problems in order to find the best continuation because the move e5 in an early state of the game that you see now in move 3 uh, can really surprise your opponent and even top grand nationals like Anatoly Karpov for instance had trouble uh, to beat this winnable counter gambit and here I've prepared really a brilliant game played by Evgeny Barev with the black pieces against Anatoly Karpov in which Evgeny Barev used this winnable counter gambit and won the game with a brilliant brilliant uh, position play then afterwards so let's check out now the winnable counter gambit what are also some other opportunities for white and how uh, black should basically play this opening in an early stage of the game so let's check out now this opening so d4 here played by anatoly karpov we have d5 c4 c6 and now uh, we can see many times this variation this knight to c3 move which is actually sort of a preparation to play then move bishop to f4 c takes d5 and similar ideas to go maybe into this exchange variation we have uh, analyzed uh, in my previous videos the exchange variation so basically the game can transpose then into the exchange variation with the move bishop to f4 we have analyzed some sidelines also of this particular uh, of this particular line so if you want to also have a better understanding of that line please also check out my previous analyzed game so after a move 90 c3 now comes the stunner which really surprised the uh, anatoly karpov in an early stage of the game now comes the move e5 it's really really wild because there are now of course different possibilities what white can do maybe as a as a normal defensive idea is to take or maybe even to play the move e3 if e3 happens then of course black will simply take e takes uh, d4 after e takes d4 you see even in long terms white didn't gain so much i think from this opening because even if white takes now c takes d5 then c takes d5 will happen then the game is symmetrical then the pawn structure is really static in the center i don't think that it's such a huge advantage here for 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 white or in the long term as a long-term plan of course black could maybe try even to play d takes c4 not immediately maybe because the bishop comes out with the tempo sort of but if maybe bishop to d3 happens then maybe d takes c4 then again white loses sort of a tempo and then white is also continuing the game maybe with an isolated pawn on d4 so the, the isolated, isolated pawn on d4 could be maybe also then a long-term weakness for white so that's why you see after move e5 uh, most of the times so white has to play simply the move d takes e5 but now comes really the tricky part here again anybody have played the move d4 and there are now again two choices knight to b1 knight to e4 uh, can also be an opportunity here in the continuation of the game knight to e4 was played and now comes actually the actual idea of the uh, of the win over counter gambit it's of course this check with also a direct attack against the e5 pawn which white took a couple of moves ago so as i said this is a clear fight idea what white uh, has i think as a problem is this advanced pawn on d4 which creates now a space advantage for black black has already sort of a pawn that occupies the other side of the board uh, of course white territory so that's why here after move queen to a uh, a5 here in the continuation knight to d2 played by karpov and here knight to d7 by evgeny barev he wants of course to take out um, with this uh, knight he doesn't want to take out with the queen because the queen is good here of course we can say the queen is really really good because uh, it paralyzes a little bit white's pro progress white's development on on the queen side so that's why knight to d7 and here uh, anatoly karpov of tried e6 of course he gave up a pawn but uh with the clear idea to even mess up a little bit the pawn structure in front of black's king so here at least karpov was probably thinking okay i'm giving back my pawn but at least i'm doing something with it i'm at least i'm weakening your pawn structure on life's worst actually the best way here uh, for black uh, for white is to proceed with the normal knight to knight to f3 uh, because now of course black can take but it's a different position because white can also take the pawn on d4 now knight takes c4 would be the best line here for black after e3 knight takes d2 maybe bishop to d2 and now queen to d5 would probably be the best continuation here for black again to get the queen centralized now knight to uh 
eat you maybe normal development knight to f6 and okay again probably white gets a tempo against the queen queen to d8 and that for bishop to c3 again i think the game is equal for both sides of course maybe even slightly better for white because of this activity after potential queen to d1 rook to d1 uh, this bishop is good this bishop is very active the knight is still on a good square of course on a centralized square but as i said here it's an equal game i think for both sides so actually this move e6 by anatoly karpov wasn't so good there are better lines so we'll analyze of course also the win over counter gambit from white's perspective with some winning games for white but now after move e6 here evgeny barev simply takes f takes e6 we have now g3 by karpov he realizes of course that uh, black could face some problems on light square so that's why he's trying to develop his bishop on g2 or in long terms maybe even on h3 where it could be attacking of course the pawn on e6 so here e5 by barev and we have said the main issue for white in this particular continuation is this advanced pawn on d4 it gives of course black black a pleasant game it gives black of course a space advantage now it's time to support this pawn uh first what you should do here is simply to protect your position you have to protect your uh position you have to protect your main advantage so that's why it's not time to break through in the center it's not time really to play now a wild game now it's time to secure simply your e5 pawn that's now the main goal even if you don't develop maybe the slight square bishop first you should as i said uh, protect your e5 pawn then in the continuation of the game your pieces will come into the game because still of the space advantage white uh, has as i said a positional problem so after move e5 bishop to g2 knight to f6 uh, here by evgeny barev knight to f3 bishop to e7 normal development you see evgeny barev is now playing a column game casting queen to c7 again pointing out protecting this e5 very very important stuff uh, so you see evgeny barev is not playing now wild moves he re realizes of course his main advantages now it's time to regroup sort of so queen to c2 uh, here played by karpov casting we have b3 karpov is also trying to develop the bishop on b2 but you see the bishop is not so good even on b2 it's blocked out by this very very firm pawn structure by black so when it comes to maybe peace activity i would give even here a slight advantage for black especially because of the knight's control the knight can come also on c5 will control then also maybe the e4 square so the knights will dance a little bit in the center of the board so as i said here also the engine for instance gives a slight advantage here for black it's uh it's of course a good good continuation for black especially when you're playing as black you want to equalize the game now uh when it comes to computer relations black is even slightly better so here b3 uh, rook to e8 uh, what i wanted to also point you out uh, in this game evgeny barev played here really perfect game without inaccuracies mistakes or blunders he played really uh with uh, with with a small amount of uh, centipon loss so really really brilliant game and evgeny barev is really sort of a player that you don't want to meet when he has his day because he has beaten many really world champions top grand masters maybe he's not sort of a player that you see that he's winning some tournaments but when he has his day he'll beat anyone so here after move rook to e8 again you see great positional move again with the sort of a protection of the e5 square now what Evgeny Barev is trying to do is to play bishop to f8 and protect this main cornerstone of the defense it's of course the e5 pawn which is of course protecting the uh, d4 pawn which is now the main space advantage on the fifth rank so here bishop to b2 bishop to f8 knight to uh, g5 by Karpov he is of course trying to uh, cement the position around the square e4 what black would love to do as a long-term plan is of course to push the pawn on e4 somehow maybe c5 and then e4 if that happens then of course two two connected pawns on the fifth rank uh, pardon me on the fourth rank like this would be very really too much to handle here for for white so that's why karpov plays so far a great blockade around the square e4 so here knight to c5 still the battle is continued uh, around the square e4 we have now h3 by uh, anatoly karpov although maybe Maybe knight um, here, d uh, knight to e4 is also a great opportunity to immediately simplify the game. Now, after knight to e4, knight takes e4. Here, queen to f7 has to be, be uh, has to be played because now, after knight to c5, bishop to c5, maybe bishop to e4 is also sort of an opportunity. But now, with queen to h5 or g6, still black can protect the position. Still, I think this would be playable for both sides. So, as I said, probably this kind of a game would lead into a draw at least in this top grand match level so here h3 was played so here karpov didn't want to have this clarification in the center around the square
over e4. We have now uh, g6 played by uh, Evgeny Barev. Now we have g4, which is now a risky choice because Evgeny Barev sends now immediately some blood because now after move g4, you have left also a little bit your f4 uh, square unprotected. Now uh, Barev is basically targeting that square. If one of these knights gets on f4, this is of course then a perfect, perfect position. So after move g4, bishop to g7, Evgeny Barev again regroups. Still, he doesn't have to rush in this position he has of course a uh, better position here in continuation we have now this clarification idea by karpov knight to e4 uh, knight takes e4 knight takes e4 and here uh, we have said knight to e6 great move by uh, but if he's trying now to occupy here this uh, f4 square so here b4 uh, played by karpov uh, trying to some get some kind of expansion on the queen side but it's a little bit too late here knight to f4 we have e3 and now knight takes g2 of course but if takes not takes out now the very important light square bishop you see now of course in the continuation of the game uh white is facing several light square problems on the king side so here knight takes g2 king to g2 a5 again a great move by barev uh, he is now undermining the pressure on the queen side of course here uh, the only advantage that white has of course in the continuation of the game is now the space advantage on the queen side here with the move a5 uh great prophylactic move here by barev he's at least breaking uh the pawn structure on the queen side so that's why here a3 uh here uh, karpov is trying of course to get again these two pawns connected in the continuation we have rook to f8 we have rook to d1 a takes b4 a takes b4 and now now, again a great move we have now uh, d takes e3 and now f3 here by uh by karpov although probably f takes e3 would be better although uh, it gives some kind of an isolated pawn here for white it's maybe a long-term weakness but now after rook to f1 rook to f1 maybe queen to e7 can be played but now rook to d1 you see white has this counterplay idea uh, because black cannot take then you lose the battle on the eighth rank so maybe this would be sort of an opportunity which unfortunately for karpov he missed in the continuation he tried f3 relying simply on his firm pawn structure he wanted to create some kind of a healthy pawn structure in front of the king by connecting these three pawns again and what he probably thought of is that he will in one particular moment simply take out the pawn on e3 which is of course uh, not protectable but here but if again continues the pressure he's simply counter-attacking around the square b4 we have now bishop to c1 bishop to h6 now rook to e1 we have bishop to e6 attacking also this pawn so you see finally this bishop comes into the game we have bishop to e3 bishop takes e3 rook to e3 but now uh, here but if takes out also so this pawn and it's now a completely better position here for for Barev. In rook to b1 attacking the queen queen to e7 knight to f2 we have queen to f7 of course continue the pressure here it's a backward pawn uh, it's also then a long term weakness unfortunately now for Barev, he doesn't have the knight anymore on the board uh he would love of course again i think uh, to cement one knight or maybe one bishop here on f4 so far it's not possible but also it comes with a direct uh, counter attack here against the pawn on c4 here queen to b2 uh, we have bishop to c4 takes takes and now queen to f4 uh here uh again but if cements now the queen on this particular position you cannot of course take because of queen takes f3 queen to c6 we have rook takes uh, uh queen takes rook on e3 queen to c4 and it's now a much much better of course position uh for karpov he is up the whole exchange here uh king to h8 uh, he has to escape from the check rook to uh, b3 attacking the queen queen to d2 we have queen to c5 now of course but if protects the spawn on e5 uh queen to d3 now again queen to f4 we have queen to c3 rook to c8 attacking the queen queen to b2 here uh, again a great move here by Barev uh, rook to c4 queen to e2 we have now h5 trying to break through trying to open files when we have of course the rooks on the board it's time to open files h5 knight to e4 here um, uh, Karpov is hoping for a draw by cementing the position by keeping now everything glued together but here h4 great move <coughs> again by uh, Barev rook to e3 we have a rook to c8 queen to f2 now comes this move rook to c2 which forces now basically uh, trades of rooks rook takes e2 queen to e2 and now king to g7 improving the position of the king queen to f2 now queen to c1 again with the threat of rook to c2 so that's why queen to h4 but now uh, barev again takes rook to c2 we have now uh, knight to f2 and here barev plays sort of a zugzwan motif he plays now uh, g5 attacking the queen queen to g3 and now all of the pieces of whites are paralyzed you cannot move the queen you cannot move the king you cannot move the knight so really really great 
Zugzwang position here by 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 F. So h4, we have king to g6, h takes g5, king to g5. We have now f4. You see, because of this Zugzwang position, uh, Karpov was forced now to play with many pawns. We have now e takes f4, uh, queen to f3, rook to d2. Again, it's Zugzwang, uh, queen, uh, king to h3. Now a check. We have uh, here queen to g2. Now rook takes f2. And in this position, uh, Anatoly Karpov resigned. So, brilliant, brilliant game. As I said, really almost a perfection here by Barev. But let's go back to the opening theory so as i said if your opponent plays the move knight to c3 in an early stage of the game it's possible here maybe to play the move e5 maybe it's really great to surprise your opponent like this e5 this whenever control gambit is really sharp opening so as i said the main goal is after d takes e5 d4 kicking away the knight knight to e4 and now queen to a uh, a5 uh, attacking with the check and also uh, trying to get the pawn back on e5 then it's time to rely simply on your space advantage around the score d4 cement this position so as i said even maybe in long terms with the move c5 that could be also a great idea it's similar to the albin counter gamut but uh, not the same of course where black is also relying simply on the space advantage on the fifth rank by pushing the pawn on d4 so okay i hope that you enjoyed this uh, game i really enjoy enjoyed it a lot uh, interesting stuff in the slav defense if you want to study the slav defense more please check out my whole series of the slav defense here's the link uh, with more than 30 videos about the slav so it's really really tough opening with many different possibilities for white and from black and uh, if you want to have a great preparation maybe as black check out my nimzo indian defense series and my hyper accelerated dragon sicilian defense series as good responses to d4 and e4 and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course